What's up, everyone? We are going to open up this Lost Caverns of Ixalan pre-release kit because we uh, we prepared for a pre-release event at our apartment and never got around to actually hosting it. Some last-minute schedule changes and last-minute work instances uh, kind of got in the way, so these have just been sitting on my shelf for three months, two months, one month. When did this set come out? November? Two months? Almost three months. Um, so in preparation for Murders at Karlov Manor that comes out next weekend, um, I'm going to open the last set that came out and see if we can build a really cool limited deck. A sealed pool, if you will. I do like the key art on Ixalan. I tried to find the banner. I have the wall scroll of Jace, Phyrexianized Jace on my wall. I tried to find the the banner for it at my shop and couldn't. I got a cool, I think that's Hotly. Kind of like dungeon delving. And then we've got this really cool like it's Aztec inspired, but it definitely resembles like hard candies of some kind, which is neat. The the hot pink accents in this set are really, really cool. And there's some sort of like Mayan calendar on the inside of this box. So that's really fun. I like that quite a bit. This will go up on my shelf. I do have a little bit of a treat afterwards, if you stick around. Um, so this is the box. It's cool. It's very plain. There's no, there's not even a Lost Caverns of Ixalan um, type on logo on here. It's just the Planeswalker symbol, the Magic the Gathering symbol. So let's see what we get. I don't know if they're doing like rare dice anymore. Um, there was the rare dice in the Lord of the Rings, I think, but I don't know if they're doing it anymore. So we got a cool, let me change the focus. We got a cool Ixalan D20 spin down life counter. It's the blue, blue speckled with black background. Pretty neat. And then we get one, two, three, four, five, six draft boosters. This is also the end of draft boosters, by the way. The next set that comes out will have the new booster pack style, which is play boosters, and they are a mix of draft boosters and set boosters. So this is the last time, this is the last set you'll ever be able to open draft boosters for. Um, the mainline set anyway. The Ravnica Remastered also has it. Let's see what our box topper rare is. So every pre-release kit comes with a um, stamped rare and you get your six boosters. And the goal is to build a 40 card or limited deck out of those cards. Um, plus lands, obviously, you don't include the lands. Um, so really you're looking for like 23, 24 playables. And our rare is, oh, it is a pugnacious hammer skull. Two and a green for a 6-6 six, six dinosaur. When pugnacious hammer skull attacks, while you don't control any other dinosaur, put a stun counter on it. So this guy cares a whole lot about having other dinos on the battlefield. Um, you also inside the deck box. So this is a nice little handy cardboard deck box that comes in your kit with your kit. You get a divider so that you can keep your main board separated from your sideboard. And you get a brief little description of what you're kind of looking for. 
how to build a proper mana curve. And yeah, 17 lands is the default. You can go up one, down one, depending on the type of deck you're building. But you want 15 to 18 creatures and five to eight other spells. And then 17 lands to make a limited deck. And then we've got a cool little um, prehistoric diorama of a bunch of dinosaurs. Probably my least favorite of the recent um, bonus arts. Let's open up this rare, take another look. We'll also give away the arena code at the end. So if you want or haven't um, redeemed in a pre-release kit for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan yet, um, stick around and you can grab that one. Uh, you get some little punch out counters. There's some stuns, some finalities, some plus one, plus ones. Those are kind of keen. And then, of course, our Pugnacious Hammer Skull. That's a cool card. Uh, really makes you need to build dino. So we'll keep that in mind as we go through. Uh, I'll keep the camera up close so we can open the packs and look at each card. Move these over here. Pack one. All right. So we're already being encouraged to build dinos. Some people um, love to be directed, if you will, by their um, foil promo. Some people don't. Some people just ignore it and build a deck like normal. And if it fits, it fits. Uh, first up, we have a rampaging spike fall. Pretty cool. Orazka Puzzle Door, an artifact. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of those cards in your hand and the other into the graveyard. It's pretty neat. Deconstruction Hammer. Volatile Wander Glyph. River Herald Guide. Nice. Ray of Ruin. Goblin Tomb Raider. Glorifier of Suffering. Oh, damn. In the Presence of Ages. Idol of the Deep King. That's pretty good. Ooh, look at this big... I keep thinking this butterfly is something on my playmat. Hermetic Nautilus. A giant artifact. Fossil. That's pretty cool. Guardian of the Great Door. And our first rare it, or uncommon is a Cavernous Maw. And a Bringer of the Last Gift. Oh. Six black black for a 6-6 six, six vampire dinosaur with flying. When Bringer of the Last Gift enters the battlefield, if you cast it, each player sacrifices all other creatures they control. Then each player returns all creature cards from their graveyard that weren't put there this way to the battlefield. Damn. And then we got a Plains. The full art lands from this set are really neat. They look like kind of like travel posters. Very beautiful. Um, basic land, and then we get a treasure token, which is great. Great to have. All right. We got a good mix in that pack one. Got a Nice little cave. Cavernous Maw becomes a 3-3 elemental creature until end of turn. It's still a cave land. Activate only if the number of other caves you control plus the number of caves cards in your graveyard is three or greater. Interesting. So it, there are a series of creature lands in this set, um, which is really neat. So we open up an Envoy of Oak. Kani Ahu, Seismic Mon Monstrosaur, Mineshaft Spider, Greedy Freebooter, them greedy freebooties, Brackish Blunder, an Adaptive Gem Guard, an Abrade, nice, I like a good 
Uh, multi-functional instant spell in limited is really fun. Acrobatic leap. Miner's guide wing. Our white's getting pretty heavy already. Um, Oda Clan landmark. An Akawali, the seething tower. Got to send four as long as there are four or more permanent cards in your graveyard. Akawali, the seething tower, gets plus two, plus two, and has trample, has to send eight. If there are eight or more um, permanent cards in your graveyard, gets an additional plus two, plus two, and can't be blocked by more than one creature. So it becomes a five, five, a seven, seven with trample and can't be blocked by more than one creature. That is big time uh helping hand Ooh, it's quint firstborn of gish gishat red green for a legendary dinosaur with haste uh when it enters the battlefield you may pay two when you do target dinosaur you control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature interesting that'll be fun Ooh, then we get an enigma jewel one blue for a legendary artifact. Enters the battlefield tapped. Tap it to add two colorless. Spend this mana only to activate abilities. You can craft with four or more non-land with activated abilities. For eight and a blue. So you exile these artifacts um, from the ones you control and cards in your graveyard. Return this card transformed under its owner's control and it transforms into a Locus of Enlightenment. Locus of Enlightenment has each activated ability of the exiled cards used to craft it. You may activate each of those abilities once per turn. Whenever you activate an ability that isn't mana ability, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Damn. That's really cool. And we get a hidden nursery, which is a green cave that uh, lets you discover four by sacrificing it. I like those. The caves are fun. Um, very useful. I mean, I was going to say that we were getting a lot of white cards, but some of the red and the green have been real bangers. Especially if we're keeping in mind that our... Promo card cares about dinosaurs and attacking, so maybe that's the play. Cavern Stomper, big old dino. Vito's Inquisitor, Vampire Knight, Oaken Siren, nice. Flying Vigilance, Family Reunion, Plundering Pirate, Cosmium Blast, Sunshot Militia. Didact Echo, Visage of Dread, Ooh. Glow Cap Lantern, Malicious Eclipse, Dreadmaw's Ire, Oh, spoilers, Deep Root Pilgrimage, Oh, this is that insane enchantment. Whenever one or more non-token merfolks you control become tapped, create a 1-1 one, one blue merfolk creature token with hexproof. And then we get a Zoyoa Lava Tongue. Goblin Warlock with Death Touch. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, each opponent may discard a card or sacrifice a permanent. Uh, Zoyoa Lava Tongue deals three damage to each opponent who didn't. That's pretty baller. And then we get a hidden courtyard, the white cave, and a treasure token. That deep root pilgrimage might be uh, worth a couple bucks. I know those are on everyone's shopping list right now. Lots of people play Ropo. What's up, bro? I know a lot of people play Merfolk, so that... Um, Deep Root Pilgrimage is probably sought after. 
We're just building an Ixalan pre-release kit because we never actually did the pre-release night at our place. So I've had these sitting on my shelf for a couple months and thought, hey, we're doing a new set next weekend. So why not do an old set this weekend? Song of Soup Stupefication. Our first card, Thousand Moons Infantry. Hotfoot Gnome. Seeker of Sunlight. That's cool. Join the Dead. Cogwork Wrestler. Oh, cute. It's a little wrestling guy. Brazen Blade Master. Disruptor Wanderglyph. Our first actual true artifact. Walk with the Ancestors. Return up to one target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Discover four. Nice. Tithing Blade. When Tithing Blade enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. And then you can craft with a creature plus four and a black. And it becomes, at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life? What? That's crazy. Two mana, everyone sacks something? Each opponent sacrifices a creature. That's strong as heck. Confounding Riddle. Uncommon Defossilize. Ruin Lurker Bat. And our rare is... Get Lost. Look at the art on that. That's so cool. One and a white for an instant destroy target creature, enchantment, or planeswalker. Its controller creates two map tokens. This is like the new swords to plowshares. And we've got a hidden Acropolis, the Black Cave, and a skeleton pirate token. That's pretty cool. God, that tithing blade is so crazy for an uncommon too. Wait, no, it's a common? It's really hard to tell the rarity of these cards because the colored portion is so minimal. This is a common. That's kind of crazy. I mean, it's expensive to like flip it over, but you play that on two or three. All right. I could would like some more land fixing, I think. Uh, we start off with a Cogwork Wrestler, a cute little guy. Quicksand Whirlpool. A Rumbling Rock Slide. Hotley's Final Strike. Screaming Phantom. Out of Air. Runaway Boulder. Path Finding Axe Jaw. Yo, this dinosaur has like lights strapped to it. What the heck? That wasn't in Jurassic Park. Blood Rage Mycoid. My little fungus bro. Jade Seed Stones. Careening Minecart. A Dusk Rose Reliquary. A Diamond Pickaxe. A Corpses of the Lost. That's a pretty good one. And an Island. Non-foil though. I'm looking for the foil version of this. It's the only one I'm missing so far. And then we get a Dinosaur Token, which is nice. Uh, those normal lands are going over here. I'm just going to grab some Mouth Juice. Our, our deck is looking pretty good so far. I keep saying that we've got a ton of white, but none of it's like crazy good. But Get Lost is really strong. But that's kind of it. Kind of it. Which is a bit of a bummer because we have so much white. It would make our lives easier. Right now, I'm leaning green-red or green-black. I 
I don't know that blue is strong enough in this, in limited. All right, last pack. We kick off, oh, press the card focus button. Staggering size. Combat tricks, hell yeah. Skullcap snail. Uh, I'm gonna put these artifacts over here. Ancestral reminiscence. Tinker's Tote, Child of the Volcano, Glorifying Fire of Suffering, Another in the Presence of Ages, Wayfair Waylaying Pirates, You have been waylaid by enemies and are forced to defend yourself. A Master's Guide Mural, what is this? When Master's Guide Mural enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 white and blue golem artifact creature token. So you pay 5 and you get a 4-4 token. And then you craft it with an artifact plus 7. And you get Master's Manufactory. Manufactory. It's an artifact that just spits out 4-4 golems. Damn. Damn. Okay. That's kind of crazy. Uh, multicolor, we don't have a pile for yet. This is our first multicolored card. I'm just going to put it right there in the middle. Earthshaker Dreadmaw. Our dinosaur plan is working out so far. We got a different art for Zawa, Zayoa Lava Tongue. That goblin warlock we've already opened. Rampaging Ceratops. And our rare is... Roaming Throne. Four colorless for a 4-4 artifact creature golem with Ward 2. As Roaming Throne enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Rosing, <laughs> roaming Throne is the chosen type in addition to other types. If a triggered ability of another creature you control of the chosen type triggers, it triggers an additional time. Damn, so this is like... Typal triggers. That's pretty cool. And then our shiny is an echo of dusk. Nice little vampire spirit. And then we get um, a promising vein for our land. Promising vein is tap to add colorless, pay one, sacrifice it, search your library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. So it is a Evolving Wilds plus. No. Because you don't have to pay for Evolving Wilds. It's Evolving Wilds minus. Um, okay. Let me go through. I don't think Zoyoa is good enough to play. Beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn... Each opponent may discard a card or sacrifice a permanent. Deal three damage to any that don't. Actually, you know what? If we could manage to fix... If we could play all four of these... Legendaries. I am not on the right camera. We don't have any land fixing, though. I mean, we do have Promising Vein, which gets us something. What does Discover do again? Exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card with va mana value X or less. Cast it without paying its mana cost or put it into your hand. Okay. So all of the caves have this Sacrifice to Discover ability. Which is cool, but that doesn't really help us with our mana very much. It can help us with the discover, but then we have a random white one. I do think we opened some really interesting... I mean, what am I splashing for, really? Do I splash red or do I splash black? I think the 
Okay, I'm going to pare these down a little bit so we can lay this stuff out. I think having two... Um, in the presence of ages is strong. Reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a creature card and or land card from among them into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard, which triggers descend. We also have a River Herald Guide in the ETBs it explores. It's a 3-1 with Vigilance. That's not bad. Our pugnacious guy only cares. We only slot him in if we build dinosaurs. Um, but we also don't have a ton of ramp. Return up to one target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Discover four. That's interesting. Seeker of Sunlight. Comes in as a 1-1, one, one, and then you pay 3 to make it explore. Explore only as a sorcery. That's interesting. Glow Cap Lantern. Equipped creature has you may look at the top card of your library anytime. Whenever this creature attacks, it explores. Uh, that's interesting, too. Maybe we build Explore. So Dino Pile. Mineshaft Spider. Mills, Dino, target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. I mean, that's just a co good combat trick. Uh, when Jade Seed Stones enters the battlefield, distribute three 1-1 one, one counters. It turns into a artifact golem with 7-7. Seven, seven. Got another Dino. Target creature you control gets plus one plus O oh until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to a target creature an opponent controls. That's not a good combat trick. Um, okay. Actually, we're gonna see. Wow, we didn't open any blue merfolk. I was gonna say maybe we play the Deep Root Pilgrimage enchantment, which gives us Merfolk every time we tap Merfolk. Um, but I think we've only got the two Merfolk. Uh, the Enigma Jewel is interesting. I don't think any of this craft stuff is worth it in Limited. I think it's very expensive. It's extremely late game. And I don't know if you've played any limited magic in the last two years, but you're not making it to turn 15. You need to be shaping up and shipping out well before then. So something that costs 10 mana to merge with something else is just not going to happen. Let's look at our black. So our main squeeze here, Akawali, the Seething Tower, it wants to send triggers. So that's like the amount of permanent types in your graveyard. Uh, not permanent types, but amount of permanence. So it has a descend four trigger and a descend eight trigger. So it comes out as a little guy but eventually can grow into it. What did I say before? A seven, seven for three mana. Uh, well, Echo of Dusk plays really well. It has Descend four. Skullcap Snail enters the battlefield, target opponent exiles a card from their hand. I don't hate that either. Corpses of the Lost, skeletons you control get plus one plus O and have haste. When Corpses of the Lost enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 Black Skeleton Pirate Creature token. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, you may pay one life. If you do, return Corpses of the Lost to its owner's hand. So you can just continuously re-grab this. That's pretty neat. But get, at the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, so this is Descend. When it attacks Millicard, yeah. 
Defossilize, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature explores, then explores again. This is a late game. Tithing Blade is huge. We already know I love that. Target creature gets minus 5, minus 5 until end of turn, but if you have Descend 4, it gets minus 10, minus 10 instead. All creatures get minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn, and if a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. That's not bad either. Visage of the Dead enters the battlefield. Target opponent reveals their hand. Choose an artifact or creature card from it. That player discards that card. Then you craft it with two creatures and six. And it becomes a dinosaur skeleton horror with menace. When it ETBs or attacks, you may mill two cards. That is Descend. Sacrifice another creature or artifact. Put a 1-1. One, one. No thank you. When greedy freebooter dies, scry one and create a treasure token. I don't think so. Bringer of the Last Gift is hilariously strong. Um, this is the guy that brings everything from the graveyard, everyone's graveyard, back into play. Um, it's silly, but it's not going to happen. Uh, five mana to exile target creature, vehicle, or non-basic land. That's not great. Um, okay, well, we could splash... We could splash red for Zoyoa. I'm just looking at the amount of cards I have right now. Do any of these care about descending? No. Dinosaurs tucked away. I don't think we're doing dinosaurs today, fellas. I don't know that Corpses of the Lost is a real play either. We could play Golem, the Jade Seed Stones, but I don't think that's going to happen either. Let me just take a real quick look at Red. Uh, Dino. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, put a 1-1 counter on Child of the Volcano. Interesting. So we're looking to maybe splash red. Odd foot gnome, another target creature gains haste. Till end of turn, target attacking creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, destroy target artifact that player controls. That is an insane combat trick. Sunshot Militia, no. Create a treasure token, no. Abrade, yes, always. Seismic Monstrosaur, sacrifice a land draw card, has mountain cycling. Um... God, do I, I'm going to put it in my deck just because it has mountain cycling. We might pull it. Um, Goblin Tomb Raider, as long as you control an artifact, blah, blah, blah. Wander Glyph. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. Mm, okay. So, if we're playing... Can we squeeze in this dino, Firstborn? Two mana for a 2-3 with haste. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay two. When you do target dinosaur, you control deals damage. Okay, we don't have other dinosaurs, so I would say no. So let's pull this back. Let me organize this a bit. Then we can take another look. Count our, num our cards. Um... These are going to be a no. Our artifacts aren't stellar. This is a creature type matters. Mm. Yeah, no. We 
we do have some decent lands. I'm going to stack these away. I wish we could have pulled off blue. If there was some more merfolk in there, I think I would have really quickly shifted to merfolk. Lands. We've got instant, instant artifact, artifact, creature. I think we're going to be pretty short on creatures is my biggest concern right now. A three, a two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten creatures. Eleven creatures, but we're not we're not actually planning on casting the monstrous or we have ten creatures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen instant sorceries and artifacts. Just gonna take a quick look through black um, and green. See if there's any low cost creatures that we might wanna slip in here. Um, I mean, Freebooter is a free scry and a treasure. That's not terrible. Uh, red is too pricey. Is it too pricey? Why am I being precious with green? Is my question. Maybe I need to splash green. What do I need the green for? Just Akawali and a couple of random creatures that don't... No, because I want to do the exploring and the descending. play the roaming throne. We can play the wander glyph. So if we include those and we cut out We probably cut out defossilize, walk with the ancestors. Uh, no, we keep that, sorry. Jade seed stones. we cut those so that leaves us with three six nine ten artifacts instants and sorceries and we've got two four six eight ten twelve fourteen creatures that's 24 that gives us 16 lands we need to cut one thing Any double pips. There's a bunch of black double pips, but I think we can get rid of the malicious eclipse as well. And I think that's about it. I think I would be really stoked to play this deck. 
in a limited environment. We've got some lands here to help us um, discover and have some fun. We've got a creature land just in case. The land distribution is going to be interesting. I am probably going to split it if we're doing 17 lands, do three mountains, four mountains, it leaves me with 13, so I would do four mountains, six forests, and eight or seven swamps. And that gives us exactly 17 lands. Actually, no, because we would have to minus four for that. So gives us close. I'm just gonna try to take a photo. That was fun. I I like this set a lot. I'm bummed that we didn't get to play it that much. Um, I would easily sleeve this up and have a lot of fun. This descend mechanic is one of my favorites, obviously being like a Golgari fan and a Dredge fan. Um, we even got some really interesting rares and mythics in this pack opening we got the enigma jewel that deep root pilgrimage that everyone's going crazy about um ultimately it's a fun set to open it's definitely not the most exciting set for me to open but apparently it has been an absolute blast to play and i think that that matters um almost more than how fun it is to open.